Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at firewall rules and app locker rules for Windows. So um, we're doing it within the context of the Hathor machine from Hack the Box. Um, and uh, we need to be able to enumerate and understand what we can and cannot do with these rules. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at where we are. Um, I've got a web shell up on the box I've managed to upload, and I can run commands here. So I can run like who am I and get back WinCorp web. Um, but I get stuck when I try to use PowerShell to download and execute some, a script or um, run a wet reverse shell directly through here or upload Netcat via the same way I got the web shell up there and then try to run it to connect back. Um, these all just fail and nothing happens. And so I really need to understand what the firewall is blocking and what app locker is blocking in order for me to figure out where I can go from here. Um, so to start, let's, let's take a look first at the firewall rules. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to PowerShell and then we can say git net firewall rule policy store active active store and what the act the policy store sort of says like what group of rules do i want to show and the active store is a collection of across all the other stores of any rules that are active the ones that are in place those ones i care about right because i don't really care about the not active rules um, and then i'm going to pipe those results into a where um, and then i will dollar store dollar sign underscore inside this where loop, basically it's gonna say for each object that comes back, do this loop, you know, and dollar sign underscore represents the individual item we're looping on. So we're gonna say for each one, we'll say dot action uh, dash equals, and we'll say block like this. So basically we're gonna say, we're gonna filter this to only show the ones that are set up to block. And this is actually not gonna return anything, it's gonna fail. And so, and, but let's look at the uh, error message that comes back. Um, you'll notice what I typed in here does not quite match what was here. So here it says where action equals block. And here I have print or quote marks. Um, it took me a few minutes to get this to work. Um, we can try changing it to like single quotes. That's the first thing I thought of. Um, and that just fails. Oops, do I have an extra parenthesis? Let's try again without that. I think this is gonna fail. Oh, this didn't fail. So we can try saying single quotes. Um, the other thing we, that works um, is we can change it to double quotes, but escape them. I think this has to do with how the web shell is handling the uh, quote marks. So, but running it that way also works. Um, so we can take a look at what we got here. Um, these are the rules. Now the rules don't quite give us a level of detail of exactly what's blocking, um, but I'm going to, at least at this point, just trust that they are doing what they say in their name. So for example, I believe this one is gonna block um, outbound, it's going to block uh, C, C script 64. And similarly, the next one down is C script 32 right here. So um, I could go and figure out a way to pull the actual logic for each of these, um, but I'm just going to for now trust that. So I think it's blocking PowerShell 32, PowerShell 64. So those can't speak out. That explains why I had trouble earlier. Um, PowerShell when you in the ISE, so it's like the um, integrated develop, de developer debugger thing. Um, so both of those, it's blocking RegServe 32. Um, 64 and 32 bit. It's blocking run DLL 32, 64 and 32 bit. It's blocking WScript 32, 64 and 32 bit. It's blocking cert util uh, 64 uh, and 32. Here, here. Um, it's blocking cert talk. I don't even know what this is, but presumably it could be used for something. Um, and it's blocking auto IT. Um, I want to note this. I'll need this I'll need to know this later in the box. Um, but anyway, so. Okay, so now I see a bunch of programs that are being blocked from speaking outbound. That's really useful to know. I can stop trying to use PowerShell to connect out for sure. Um, the other thing I need to look at then is app locker. And so we will change this. Let's see, get rid of this. We'll do git app locker uh, policy. And we'll do effective. And we'll do XML. Now this is going to return this gnarly. If you don't do XML, let's see. First, I'm like, ooh, who likes XML, right? Um, if we run it, we just get this. And we can sort of see, like, there's a bunch of collections, and there's a collection called AppX and DLL and AXE, um, but I don't get a lot of detail out of that. There's probably a way to get PowerShell to do this the way in a more usable way. I couldn't figure it out. Um, so what I did was I grabbed this right here. And this, I don't know if you can see here, if I start scrolling, you can see across the bottom here, there's this, this bar, there is a lot of stuff here. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab this, start scrolling a little bit. I'm going to do shift end, and I can copy all of that. And we'll, oop, I didn't look like I copied. Let's try, let's try that one time. Um, oh, we're back. We're at the end here. So I'll do uh, start selecting. Oops, start selecting. And I'll do shift home to try to select everything. Control C to copy. Oh, it's still it's sensitive to my mouse. 
Okay, Control C to copy. Come over here. We will vim and we'll call this like app blocker dot XML. We'll push I to insert. We'll do Control Shift V to paste, and this is going to take a second, but you can see it's kind of starting to move. Um, we'll give it just a second here. There we go. Uh, escape colon right quit, and what I'm going to do is open this up in VS Code, um, because that is where I can deal with this more easily. Um, so I get this, I get it here in VS Code. If I hit uh, Control Shift I, it will uh, format it for me. So it went from all one long, terrible line to a lot of lines. How many lines do we have here? Uh, 584 lines. So that's much more easy to deal with. Um, you might have to, to, in order for that to work, you might get a message being like, there's no um, formatter for that. You're gonna wanna check your extensions here. And I've installed the XML tools extension. Um, there's also a chance sometimes you might get like a note saying like this isn't an ins this is not a trusted directory or something or like when you look at this this will be installed but all gray um, and there's be a little shield right here and if you click on that shield you can say yeah I trust this run I trust what I'm looking at here it's okay to run this on there um, and that'll enable this and allow you to control shift I um, once I control shift I the next thing I do is control K and then control zero and that will collapse all of these. Um, if I un can I do that? Oops, I undo that. Okay, so we'll Control Shift I again. Um, you'll one of the cool things VS Code does for us here is if you come over here, you have all these little arrows, and so I can collapse different pieces um, of these, you know, bits, and we can collapse the whole thing. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to collapse everything. I want to collapse everything to start. So I'm going to do Control K, Control Zero, and that's what that's going to do. Now I can start to uncollapse things one by one. So at the top level, I've got these one, two, three, five different groups. So, so I have app X. I don't even really know what app X is, um, but I can start to drill down into it and say, okay, here's the conditions. And basically it is, basically it looks like it's just working. Let's see. Um, can I make this bar go away? Yeah, let's get rid of view. Um, oh, and let's do view word wrap. This would be easier. Here we go. So this is app X is allowing all signed package apps. Okay. So I don't, I, I guess I'll keep that in mind. I'll note that. Um, now I can come down here and look at DLLs, more stuff. So we have, uh, let's see, if it's signed by Microsoft, it's going to allow. Now I can go down here and actually, that's the name of the rule. At least the rule doesn't technically have to match that, but I can come down here and see the condition, publisher name equals blah, 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 all this stuff. Um, so publisher name has to be Microsoft. Um, for Again, I'll probably, at least in this video, you know, it's always a good idea to make sure the rules actually do what their name says they're going to do. But for now, I'm, I'm going to let you know they, they all do. That's not part of, I don't think that's part of the challenge yet to um, bypass it that way. So um, under EXE, oh, scrap, let's, we've skipped DLL. Let's go back under DLL. Um, oh, so we did, we have the, we have signed by Microsoft. We also have that it's allowed to run uh, C share scripts 7z, 7zip64.dll. Just that path is allowed to run. Um, that'll be useful later on. Um, it can run things out of the program file, program files folder. It can run, uh, get bad passwords, PSI, PS 60, PSI 64.dll. Um, it can run members. Let's see. Um, so things located in the windows folder and then, um, things located in more things located in the windows folder. Everyone can run, uh, DLLs in the program files folder. And then members of the local admin can run DLLs, can run anything. So, um, okay, so that's, we've now hit, uh, we've done app X and we've done DLL. Let's close that back. Um, we can go look at EXEs. Now EXE, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm gonna note a lot of these are explicit denies, right down here, action deny. Um, and that is because basically there's a bunch of known app locker bypasses and the author of this box went out of their way to try to block that stuff. So we're not gonna run msdt.exe. We're not gonna run presentation host.exe deny. Um, we are going to allow if signed by administrator.users from users of wincorp.com. Good to know. Um, we are going to allow if it's signed by audit, auto IT. Okay. We're not, we're denying MSHTA. We're denying MS build. We're denying install util. We're denying MS build again, probably 64 and 32 bit there. Um, we are allowing if signed by Microsoft corporation. Um, we are denying this some 32 tasks, reg serve, bypass, 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 bypass. Let's see, these are all denies. Uh, let's keep going here, deny, deny, deny. So here we go, we're allowing files in the Windows folders. Good, deny, 
we are going to allow bginfo64.exe. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, deny, 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 deny. Um, and, you know, again, if I was, it would not be exciting to sit here and watch me write this down, but I would actually write down each of these so that I can go compare against, you know, known app blocker bypasses um, and see if there's something else that maybe they forgot when they were doing this list. Um, deny, 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 deny. All these are denies. Let's keep going down. Uh, denies. Anything interesting? Deny, deny, deny. Um, so here we're allowing program files, not not as not surprising. Um, win, another Windows files, more denies. We're getting close to the end though. Deny, 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 uh, deny, deny. So this one is allow members of local admins to run anything, and then another deny. So basically, there's a bunch of app locker bypass blocks. Um, there's a couple things: BG Info, Auto IT signed, Microsoft signed, um, signed by the local admin, um, but otherwise pretty tightly locked down. So we're gonna that exes are gonna be tough to run, um, and we're gonna have to figure out how to later in the box. Um, MSI files, basically, if it's digitally signed Windows installer files, allow. If it's in the system drive Windows installer directory, allow. If it's being run by administrator, allow. That's it. Um, and then scripts, which comes back to you know PowerShell and things like that. Um, if it's signed by the administrator of WinCorp, we can we can run it. Um, Windows folders were good. Program files, Windows folder, uh, program files again, Windows files again. Um, oh, C script login.cmd can be run. Okay, good to know. I want to look at that when I get a foothold. Um, and uh, members of admins can run things. So um, hopefully this was useful to you. Um, I find this giant blob of XML very intimidating, but I wanted to show you how if you open it up in VS Code and if you format it and you use the collapsing and uncollapsing, you can pretty quickly in just a couple of minutes go through and figure out everything it's doing. And again, when I'm doing this not for video, I'll be taking notes so I can write down exactly what's allowed and what's not allowed. So now as I work through the box, I've got it just easily at my disposal to, take, to look at. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I appreciate uh, your watching and uh, I'll talk to you next time.